In my April 2015 newsletter, uh, I talked about uh, different types of diets and uh, an extreme diet on one end. That extreme diet is the diet of the Eskimo. If you see the uh, diet of the Eskimo is about 50% fat, 35% protein, and 15% carbohydrate. Uh, the Eskimo doesn't get energy from the protein in the meat that he or she eats. They get the energy, the fuel from the fat. As a matter of fact, when you approach that protein level of 35% of the calories as protein, you get into a condition called rabbit starvation. Uh, people discovered this when they started living off very lean rabbits. Uh, the body actually uh, started to fall apart without the, uh, with this much protein. People got sick, nauseated. And that's about the upper limit of protein that you can take in. The American diet's about 40% fat, 20% protein, about 40% carbohydrate. The diet I recommend, which is very similar to Dr. Estelson's diet, and, uh, the diet Dr. Ornish recommends, the diet uh, Mr. Pritikin used to recommend, all pretty much the same kind of diets. Uh, it's about 8% uh, fat, 12% protein, and 80% carbohydrate. Now, at the other end of this extreme is something called the Kempner diet, which I'm going to talk to you about. This is the, uh, the as opposite as you can get to a low-carb diet or a diet consumed by the Inuit Eskimos. And the Kempner diet is 5% fat, 5% protein, and 90% sugar, carbohydrate. So we're going to talk about some of these diets over the next few minutes. Uh, <clears throat> the reason I looked into the uh, Inuit Eskimo diet, and uh, Inuit is a preferred term by some people, Eskimo is an offensive term by some people, but Eskimo is the term that's used in the historical and the scientific literature to talk about these people of the far north, so I will use that term, it is a proper term. Uh, people who are on low-carb diets, uh, diets like Atkins and Grain Brain and Wheat Belly, these ketogenic diets, they use the Eskimo as an example of how people can, no, not really can, but should live on an all-meat diet. So I felt it was necessary for the new book and also for a newsletter and a discussion for you folks to explore the Eskimo diet and see really what this is all about. Is it? Is it right to use people living at the extremes of the environment and barely surviving off that environment? Is it okay to use that as justification to eat low-carb, ketogenic, unhealthy diets? The Eskimo diet is high cholesterol, low calcium, high fat, low fiber, high protein, low vitamin C. Uh, they live off polar bears and seals and whales and fishes 10 months of the year. Then for a couple of months of the year, they have some, uh, some berries that they pick. So they get a little bit of vegetable food during those months. Uh, people wonder how in the world can uh, the Eskimo live off a diet of land animals and sea animals with virtually no plants? How can that happen? And they not go into ketosis like you would on a typical Atkins diet. What happens, or at least what uh, the scientific literature conveyed to me, is that because the Eskimo consumes the animal right away in a fresh state and often raw, they get enough sugar from the glycogen present in the animal's muscles to keep them out of ketosis. Do you follow that? If you don't have any sugar, your body burns fat and you go into ketosis. Well, they just get enough sugar out of the fresh animal muscle to prevent them from going into ketosis. And the Eskimo isn't in ketosis because of that. It is exactly the opposite, of course, the kind of diet that we're recommending here. Uh, there is an apparent Eskimo paradox. Uh, and this is what you're taught. You're taught the Eskimo diet is a good diet because Eskimos have no heart disease. They have no cancer. That's what you're told, no heart disease, no cancer. And you're thinking to yourself, well, how in the world can a diet that's high in cholesterol, high in saturated fat, just, you know, totally animals, not cause heart disease? How does that happen? Or is it true? Well, one of the mechanisms that's been invoked and it was brought up here to me last night is the idea that omega-3 fats, which are concentrated in cold water marine fish, prevent the Eskimo from having heart disease. And I think they do in part. They don't prevent them from having atherosclerosis, 
But what these omega-3 fats do is they thin the blood so that when a plaque ruptures inside of an artery, which leads to a blood clot or a thrombus, those omega-3 fats, they thin the blood enough so they may have less clinical heart disease, like heart attacks or strokes, sudden strokes. But it's the omega-3 fat that's been talked about as uh, the key to preventing having artery disease and heart disease. Well, as far as a clinical state goes, uh, and the presence of atherosclerosis, this has been reviewed, a thorough study published in atherosclerosis, and it says, uh, looking at uh, the evidence of coronary artery disease, comparing non-Eskimos to Eskimo populations, uh, they have a similar, uh, a similar incidence of coronary artery disease. They have an excess uh, in strokes, the Eskimo does, compared to the general population, the Danes that they compared them to. Overall mortality is twice as high in the Eskimo as compared to the Danes. And their life expectancy is approximately 10 years shorter. Uh, articles I've read about the Eskimos describe them as uh, young, strong, and fit. But rarely did they see a person over the age of 60. Now, these are traditional Eskimos, people who were studied. They weren't, they weren't studied uh, until about the mid-1800s. And so the earliest writings about the real Inuit Eskimo people describe them as looking well, appearing well, appearing well but not living very long. Uh, they did have atherosclerosis, a success of atherosclerosis, as reported in this study in 2003. But a, uh, a more convincing bit of research that will surely tell you you can't get away with eating bears and seals and moose and fish and avoid damage to your coronary arteries comes from studies of Eskimos dating back 2,000 years. Mummifications. Uh, in the cold tundra of that part of the earth, when people were buried, they were essentially fro in a frozen state. And so large parts of their bodies remained. And when they were dug up and examined either by autopsy or by CAT scan examination, they found extensive atherosclerosis in the arteries throughout the body of Eskimos. Hearts, kidneys, legs, brains, 2,000 years back. National Geographic did, oh, here's, here's some, some pictures of these uh, calcifications. <clears throat> National Geographic uh, did an article, it was in 19, 1987. They published an article about, about two women who were in their cave, their ice cave, and the, uh, the top collapsed and froze them in a tomb of ice for 500 years. They estimated one woman was in her 20s, another woman was in her 40s. Frozen in a tomb of ice for 500 years, they discovered them and they autopsied them. And what they found is both had severe atherosclerosis, in other words, hardened the arteries. And also both suffered from osteoporosis. Now, we won't get a chance to talk about this today, but those of you who followed my work, you do understand that osteoporosis is a consequence of eating animal foods. When you eat animal foods, you eat very high protein foods. These proteins dissolve into amino acids. The kinds of amino acids that are present in animal foods are very acidic. They're sulfur-containing amino acids, a high amount of sulfur-containing amino acids, which breaks into sulfuric acid. So this whole load of acid is dumped into the person's body. And the body has to neutralize this acid. And the way it does it is it dissolves the bones, and the bones release alkaline material. And that's how you get osteoporosis. And they could see it 500 years ago, back before pollution, back before modernization. Extensive osteoporosis in these people. A uh, study published on rather modern day Eskimos, this is uh, 1974. They went to uh, the part of the world where these people live, and they did bone mineral density tests on them to check to see how thick the bones were with minerals. And what they found is that the Eskimo, uh, in every age category, had about 10 to 15 percent greater bone loss when compared to Caucasians in the US. 
from eating all of that animal food. Uh, they made a statement, uh, aging bone loss, which occurs in many populations, has an earlier onset and greater intensity in Eskimos. Nutritional factors of high protein, high nitrogen, high phosphorus, low calcium may be implicated. This was written in 1974. Uh, we've, we've known for 60 years what causes osteoporosis. It's not something that just happens, it's because of the high intake of this acidic food, these animal foods. And the Eskimos are a good example. So here we have uh, three strikes against the Eskimos. They don't live long. They have uh, extensive artery disease. And they have uh, weak bones. Uh, Eskimos are also infected with uh, parasites, trichinella. About 12% of the population is infected with trichinella, which is a parasite found in muscles. You get trichinosis. You probably heard about getting it from pork. Fortunately, most of them aren't sick, but a few get sick from that infection. So being exposed to all of these animals uh, results in another risk problem. That is, whatever diseases are in the food they eat, they catch. <clears throat> Eskimos are, are horribly polluted uh, because they eat high on the food chain. It is high on the food chain as you get. Now, this pollution has only become a problem since the 70s. Uh, after World War II, we had a whole bunch of chemicals that were developed, uh, pesticides, persistent organic pollutants, uh, methylmercury, all kinds of these environmental pollutants were put into our atmosphere, and they spread all over, the, all over the world, through the air and through the oceans, and they get in the food chain, and because they're fat-soluble, they go from the seaweed or the grasses and grains into the next animal, and then the animal eats that animal, and so on, and the human being who eats that animal. Bio, they bioaccumulate, and the concentration is biomagnified. Because the diet of people in this area of the world is still somewhat traditional, and they eat a lot of uh, native foods like polar bears and walruses and seals and fish and so on, and in addition, they have the rich Western diet. Uh, these are among the most polluted people on the planet. As I told you yesterday, and the slide said so today, the breast milk and the body tissues of Inuit Eskimos are so full of these pollutants, they are classified as hazardous toxic waste. And an uh, Eskimo woman who breastfeeds her children delivers breast milk that has five to ten times more organic pesticides and other pollutants in the milk than does a woman from southern Canada. So to use the Eskimo as an example of why you should eat a high meat diet, I think fails on every single point. And I didn't even get into whether or not they're constipated. <coughs> but it would be a good question to ask, wouldn't it, since 70% of the people on the Atkins diet were reported to be constipated.